everyone. Thank you for tuning into my video. Today will be part two of the Sansui QRX 5500A restoration, and today's video will be focused on if this thing will power up. I've been dying to see if this thing will light up, smoke, catch on fire, who knows, but we're going to find out together. Uh, I was able to dig around in my box of cords and I found just an old generic power cord that we can solder in. Uh, it doesn't, it's not exactly original, but uh, it'll work for the time being until I can find a cord that's more original to the unit. Uh, but before we go push in the power button, we're going to uh, remove this wooden bonnet and kind of give the circuit boards a visual inspection. So we're going to check for uh, any burnt up uh, electrical components, smoked out resistors, uh, any smoky smells, any fried uh, power boards, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're just gonna kinda take a little look, see what's going on inside, and if everything looks clean and it's just dirty and old, then we'll apply power to it and see what happens. Uh, so without further ado, let's take this bonnet off. Gotta figure out how to do that. I think it's just the same as the Pioneers, but we'll find out. Take the bonnet off and I'll get you in closer and we can kinda take a look into what's going on inside. Maybe we can get some clues as to why they cut the power cord off. <laughs> I have no idea, but um, maybe we could find some clues as to why it was not working before, or who knows, maybe all it needs is a power cord and some adjustments. Uh, we'll find out together. So without further ado, let me get this bonded off and I will get back to you. All right, we're into the belly of the beast here. It's pretty gross inside, I'm not gonna lie. It's like splatter marks from something. This dust is caked everywhere. These caps are all dusty. But uh, first glance, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. It looks like a relay of some sort, maybe a soft start relay or something like the Pioneer. Diodes here. This must be the bridge rectifier board, maybe. I have to look up on the schematic. But it uh, looks like we got some fuses. Maybe we could start by checking those. Make sure those are good. Man, it's dirty. Let me give it the smell test. Yeah, don't smell anything smoky or burnt. It just smells old and dirty. <laughs> um, let me get my multimeter. No, it's not here, of course. Uh, let me get my multimeter and then I will get back to you. All right, got my multimeter here. We put it on the beeper setting and we'll check those four fuses back here. That one's good. That one's good. That's good. Lastly, There we go. That one's good too. So we know the fuses on that board are good. I guess that's somewhat of a good sign. Uh, but man, this thing is just gross. It's going to take a little bit of elbow grease to get this thing nice and clean inside. Um, so that checks out. And I see we don't have access to the power cord. May have to go underneath. So uh, let's flip it up on its side. And take a little... Maybe we could flip it over. It actually just... Flip it all the way over. So let's flip it over and then uh, we'll take a look at what's going on in the bottom. All right, we're in. Uh, it took a lot of screws to hold that bottom cover on, geez. Uh, but it looks like we got more fuses here. This must be the uh, the maybe the power board because the output transistors are right here. Um, everything looks okay first glance. None of the caps look like they're bulging or leaky. These resistors don't look like they've burnt up. Transistors look okay. 
gonna have a good old time getting all the contact cleaner down in here and all these switches. Okay, that'll be for another day. We'll get that once we find out if this thing works or not. <clears throat> Let me get my multimeter set up again. And we'll check all these fuses here. It's good, 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 good. Oh, that's a good sign too. No blown fuses, so we haven't experienced a short or an overload. So that's a good sign. The bottom's pretty clean. The top is filthy, but the bottom is not too bad down here. This is just a mess right here. Woo, it's a lot of wires. Um, yeah, I don't see anything that's alarming. <laughs> um, we have access to the power cord. Let's see. Comes in back here. Uh, no, it's from the side. Okay, um, so I think the next thing we're gonna do is put a cord in it and see what happens. Check the fuses from the visual inspection. Now we'll do the smoke test. <laughs> we'll see if it passes the smoke test. So let me get that power cord installed. I'll find the best way to get access to uh, solder that bad boy in, and then we'll go from there. So once I'm ready to fire it up, I will get back to you. All right, the power cord has been replaced. I got sidetracked and had to run a few errands, so it took a lot longer than I wanted it to, but power cord is now in. Um, there was also, uh, when I had it flipped up, I noticed there was a fuse back here, screw-in type fuse that we forgot to check, check that, and it was good. So I think now we're ready to see what happens with this bad boy. I got the magic plug here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. Okay, no smoke, didn't blow the circuit, the circuit breaker. And now I think we're ready to uh, flip the power switch here. I'm a little nervous, but I think it's, I think it might work. I, I didn't see any signs of short circuits and stuff like that. None of the fuses were blown. I just think maybe someone donated this thing to a, like an electronic recycler and then they just cut the cords off when they get uh, <coughs> donations, who knows? But anyways, let's see what happens. Let me make sure everything is good to go. Volume's off, no speakers on. All right, let's see what it does. Here we go. Oh, see, oh, I just heard a relay. No smoke. <laughs> Still don't sell any smoke. I think we're, uh, I think it's working. There's two lights lit up down here. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna need to order some uh, bulbs for it. Man, this thing's gonna look so cool with, with bulbs, with new bulbs in it. Wow. Oh, heard something else cut. Oh. What's it doing? I wonder if it's going into protection mode. Let's see if it clicks back on. Yeah, I wonder if it's going into protection mode for something maybe uh, maybe really high DC offset. Uh, who knows? <laughs> I have no idea. But uh, it powers up. It doesn't blow up. Doesn't catch on fire. Nothing smokes. That's a start. We're getting getting closer to getting this thing working again. Um, but I think that will be it for this video for part two. Part three, we'll go through and diagnose what's wrong with it. We'll start by checking uh, DC offset, idle current, all that stuff. I gotta look into the schematic and see what, excuse me, what we can adjust. Um, I'm sure there's lots of adjustments we can make and maybe that'll keep it from coming out of protection or going into protection mode. So, uh, but we'll figure it out. We'll get to the bottom of it. Could be, 
number of things really. But I'm going to start uh, taking a deep dive into the schematic and the service manual to figure out what to expect going in. And then uh, I'll film another video on the service. We'll service this thing. And once it's serviced and it's ready to go, then I'll film another video doing the restoration where we clean it all up, redo the wood, clean the faceplate, replace the bulbs, get this thing just shining beautifully again. It's a sweet looking receiver. But that'll be it for this uh, video. Uh, I'm super stoked that it turns on. Um, I was kind of worried there because of how disgusting it was on the inside, but it powered up, no problem. Uh, but that'll be it for this video. As always, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know. Stay tuned for part three. Just a quick thing before the end of the video here, I was playing around with the switches some more and the bulbs aren't burnt out. I just don't know how to use this thing. If we go to, let's say, FM, see it lights up. How cool is that? That is cool. And then if we put it into four channel mode, then the other meters light up. That is so cool. Sweet, all the bulbs are working. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned for part three. We'll take a deeper dive into why this thing uh, keeps tripping into protection mode or whatever the heck it's doing. And we'll see if it makes an output. So stay tuned and uh, I'll see you in the next one.